Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. We got the Bitcoin chart on the daily. Bitcoin right now trading at $21,000, guys. And on the daily trend, we are seeing higher lows. It's looking promising so far. I mean, we're seeing higher lows and we're also seeing higher highs here. So, I mean, I don't know at this moment in time. There is still, um, you know, a lot going on. Crypto market's looking okay. You know, the crypto industry also looking fairly robust in that we are seeing progress in a lot of ways, even if that means, um, you know, things like Coinbase getting sued or at least being investigated by the SEC. This from XRP Crypto Wolf. I wasn't going to jump into this right away, but it seems like the appropriate time. SEC probing Coinbase for allegedly listing securities. And apparently now they're saying that this investigation predates what happened last week when that guy who was working for Coinbase was charged for insider trading. So here is the story now. U.S. Security and Exchange Commission is reportedly probing crypto exchange Coinbase, a publicly traded company it oversees on suspicion it allowed U.S. persons to trade unregistered securities. Now, isn't this kind of a farce considering back in 2021, Brian Armstrong came out and said this reminder about how Coinbase lists its assets. Our goal is to list every every being the highlighted word here, asset where it is legal to do so. And we know that Coinbase back in uh, January of 2021 had to delist XRP because of the uh, SEC investigation. And this is obviously a point of contention with the XRP community. And, you know, so Coinbase has gone on and they've kind of taken the, the, the high ground, I suppose, the moral high ground in their eyes saying, look, we do everything by the book. We're not going to take any risks here. Well, now it's looking like they are getting probed by the SEC. Just down here, it says uh, SEC Chair Gary Gensler has previously also said he believed that Coinbase should register as a national securities exchange, uh, given some of the cryptocurrencies it has listed. Coinbase, for its part, has criticized the SEC for not providing clear rules. So uh, to their defense, um, and to play devil's advocate, I guess, a little bit here, uh, Coinbase has been pretty good about saying, look, we were doing this. And you're now coming around and you're saying this. So how is it that we're not playing by the rules? Let's also not forget that they did uh, recently launch an IPO in April of 2021. So there's also that. The SEC should have known if they were completely compliant or not. Um, so, you know, despite these things we are seeing, the market... Um, I mean, you know, here's the thing. The market's funny because we are going to see the normal cycles, but... You know, at the end of the day, we have to also realize that cryptocurrency, a burgeoning industry, and we are going to get some of these teething pains. The question is, are we at the end of it or not? Uh, I took a fractal pattern here from the Bitcoin chart. Just kind of wanted to bring it over here just uh, to just take a look at some technicals real quick here. And although the fractal doesn't match up with the current trend that we're seeing, you guys can see down here that this uh, bottom point lines up fairly closely. Oops, where's that horizontal? Bottom point lines up. Why is that not going? That's really strange. Horizontal line. Boom. No? No. Okay. Doesn't want to go for whatever reason. There, I'll just take the drawing tool. You guys can see. Oh, nothing's working on the chart all of the sudden. Okay, that is strange. Anyway, here, look at where the cursor's going. You can see where this is lining up right here. Bottom of the current trend bottom of the fractal pattern from back in late 2018 after we saw that drop. So from a technical analysis perspective, we are finding that uh, we are seeing those similar levels. Let's see if I just remove everything, if that works now. It does not work. Anyway, don't want to dwell too much uh, anyway on the technicals right now. Maybe I have to log in and log out again. Uh, okay, it looks as though it's hung up. I, I try to bring up the XRP chart, doesn't look like it's working. I'm gonna keep moving, guys. With regards to crypto and how we're progressing, XRP Crypto Wolf also brought this to our attention. U.S. Senators push bill to make small crypto transactions tax-free. Now, this is the kind of world that I think we are pushing to see eventually. Uh, utilizing our cryptocurrency, whether it's XRP, whether it's, uh, you know, any other cryptocurrency that you hold for that matter. I was telling people this over the weekend. You know, the idea that we can fight inflation if we hold a currency, if we hold a crypto that we've been holding for a long enough time that we're up on our investment. Like, for example, I've been holding Bitcoin since 2017. I hold my Bitcoin, so I purchased it with $2017. A cost averaged out at about $4,000 USD per Bitcoin. So that's my entire stash of Bitcoin. Uh, I've cashed averaged out. So even now, right, if Bitcoin's at, what, $21,000, divide that by the $4,000, and I'm up 5.25x on my investment. 
So as another example, for every dollar that I put in in 2017, now I have $5.25. So if I'm buying something for $5.25 today, well then I'm really paying $1 for it because I put that dollar in in 2017. And this is how, I mean, this is uh, one of those theories about how uh, countries and people, individuals can fight inflation if we can start actually making transactions with our cryptocurrency. So U.S. senators are now pushing a bill to make small crypto transactions tax-free. And so, you know, this just kind of goes along with that. If the transactions are tax-free, that's going to entice more Americans to uh, want to pay with their cryptocurrency. Prominent U.S. senators are trying to free Americans from tracking taxes every time cryptocurrency changes hands. Uh, this is being introduced in a new bill. And this is for uh, transactions up to $50. So not huge transactions, but... I mean, I guess it is a start. Senator Pat Toomey joined uh, with Kristen Sinma to push the exemption from tax requirements for crypto users making small investments or purchases. Their Virtual Currency Tax Fairness Act matches a similar effort previously introduced in the House of Representatives. The idea of clearly low-level, or sorry, clearing low-level transactions from tax worries uh, has also appeared elsewhere, including in a more comprehensive bill introduced this year by Senator Cynthia Loomis and Kirsten Gillibrand. Well, digital currencies, here's the quote, well, digital currencies have the potential to become an ordinary part of Americans' everyday lives. Our current tax code stands in the way, said to me. He has sought to help the crypto industry on multiple tracks before he retires from the Senate at the end of this session. So again, progress is being made even in the United States. I know, um, you know, worldwide, obviously we are seeing a lot more cryptocurrency adoption, a lot more adoption with DLT technologies, uh, a lot of countries already utilizing RippleNet, central banks, lots of organizations already partnering up with Ripple to make this happen. So, you know, the cryptocurrency industry is very interesting in a lot of ways because there is, of course, there's the price, and of course there is, you know, making money off uh, whatever coins you hold, which is, I think, uh, a lot of the reason why we're here. But the industry is growing so much, and it's becoming more and more uh, mature, and that's a good thing for everybody, because when you hold, if you hold cryptocurrency... Uh, and you are living in the future, right? We need this to happen now for future benefit. Down the road, I think we're all going to benefit if we're holding cryptocurrency. It's not just all about buy today, sell everything when you've made money and cash out into fiat. You know, a lot of the ideology for some of these guys who have been in the industry for a long time goes as such. Why would you ever cash out of your cryptocurrency? Why would you cash out of something valuable into something that is garbage, i.e. the US dollar, uh, the Australian dollar, the Euro, the Canadian dollar, the yen, whatever fiat currency it is, because fiat currency is looked at as the scam and not cryptocurrency in these people's eyes. Anyway, um, wanted to keep moving, guys. John Deaton here also uh, kind of talking a little bit about why we are in a problematic situation with regards to the Ripple XRP lawsuit and this idea of the secondary market sales of XRP. Now he's saying this important note regarding secondary sales of XRP. A lot of people were understandably confused by the SEC's footnote in its last response, wherein it implied secondary market sales weren't at issue in the case. Bull crap. So on the one hand, the SEC is saying, oh, we're not looking at the secondary market sales. Um, but John Deaton is saying, no, that's crap. They are certainly looking at secondary market sales. Some believed exchanges would relist XRP as a result. And so we haven't actually uh, even seen American exchanges relist XRP as a result. Uh, he says, not true. I addressed this issue in the reply letter I filed today. During the very first substantive hearing, Judge Netburn questioned the SEC's implausible theory that every individual in the world who is selling XRP is committing a Section 5 violation. Ripple lawyers summarized the SEC's response to Judge Netburn's comment perfectly. <laughs> they said this, The SEC did not dispute the premise of Judge Netburn's question, responding ambiguously, that non-parties XRP transactions would likely be exempt under Section 4, which only applies to a security uh, subject to registration under Section 5. The SEC essentially confirmed that, regardless of the seller or circumstances of the sale, XRP is in its view, per se, an investment contract and therefore a security per se. That premise, if accepted, would empower the SEC to regulate vast numbers of non-parties, including digital asset exchanges, vendors, and retail holders. They're going after everything, and this is why we need guys like John Deaton to nip this in the bud. I cannot imagine how much work it has been for John Deaton uh, to pursue this on behalf of XRP holders, uh, you know, the 60,000 plus of us who have, uh, you know, signed up for this class action. Uh, he goes on to say, thus, if the SEC's theory were accepted by the court, the SEC could regulate exchanges and retail holders. 
What did we just witness? The SEC filed the lawsuit against former Coinbase product manager for insider trading of selling securities. So here's where his theory goes. Here's where, you know, he's seeing where Coinbase wants to go. They list nine tokens as securities being sold on Coinbase without suing Coinbase. We are at war here. The war started on December 22nd, 2022, when the SEC called XRP itself a security. So this is a bigger play. And I think that, um, you know, it's it's very apparent now. At first we thought, oh, well, maybe they've been looking at Ripple for a while. Maybe this is an isolated case. I think that the strategy has progressed uh, since then. I think, you know, they, they, they maybe thought that they could uh, win in court against Ripple. Of course, they underestimated the power of the XRP community, how much work we've been doing, how much information we've been disseminating online. Uh, and, you know, the fact that John Dean was going to come after them as well. They were not anticipating any of this. So now they're pivoting. I think that they are seriously scared and they are trying to grasp at straws here. They are looking for any kind of avenue to gain more control or at least try to retain as much control as possible. So, so we've got this also, okay? But again, just back to kind of, you know, the ecosystem and seeing more milestones being achieved. In this case, this is from Tom T underscore crypto on Twitter. The FTSO system went live on the Flare Network's mainnet over the weekend and is functioning as intended. So some Flare Network's news, guys, a huge technical milestone achieved during observation mode. Check. Uh, congratulations to all the FTSOs now submitting data with more coming online daily. Let's go. So broadening the ecosystem, uh, Flare Network's running on the XRPL, as we know, and uh, we are seeing that they are progressing as well. Uh, and we're seeing a lot of these types of stories, like this one from Michael Branch here on Twitter. First XRPL project to list on a top tier exchange. This has to do with Huobi. So Huobi is one of the world's largest crypto exchanges. They just announced the inclusion of Sologenix Solo token on its quotation list. Previously, the token was listed on centralized platforms such as uh, MEXC or Gate, but it was the listing on Huobi that allowed to speak about the first case of XRPL ecosystem project circulation on the first tier exchange. So just a little bit about Solo here. Uh, the choice of Sologenic uh, to list such a large platform does not seem strange. The project is an absolute independent unit built within the XRPL, uh, which not only takes uh, from its foundation, but also gives in many ways. So the decentralized trading solution from Sologenic is one of the most popular ways to enter the XRPL ecosystem. In addition, the platform is almost the only one of its kind providing asset tokenization services and its product, Solo Next, designed for financial institutions, is similar to its distant relative Ripple. So uh, we are seeing, you know, again, more development on the XRPL. That is, uh, you know, just one example of where we are seeing development on the XRPL. Flare Networks, again, is another one. Uh, but we're also seeing lots of uh, NFT projects being minted on the XRPL. So we are seeing the utility being driven there, guys. Again, this is being built out for the future. This is why. I think it is prudent. I think it is going to be prudent to keep holding cryptocurrency. And this is why I've created that spreadsheet. If you guys didn't catch uh, the video I did last week, how much XRP do you need to retire in the year 2022? I will link it up here in the top right hand corner. Uh, gives you guys uh, some interesting, um, you know, may maybe a different perspective on what you do need to retire. I also included this spreadsheet, uh, which is also going to be available in the description of this video. So I went over all of that in that video. Oh, and why, yeah, the reason I brought up the spreadsheet is to, uh, just to kind of drill this point home, right? That if you hold cryptocurrency, you might not want to sell out of all of it. So this sheet here, you know, based on what cryptocurrencies you hold, gives you guys a sample of, you know, if you were to sell out of 20%, 25%, 30%, so on and so forth, all the way up to 90% of your cryptocurrency, uh, how much you would have to cash out of, how much would be remaining, uh, and what that uh, number would be in fiat, and then the total amount in USD, what that would be. So, um, you know, just another resource here, uh, if you are thinking about the long term, and of course, guys, here we have it. I mean, when it rains, it pours. It seems like we've been getting a lot of Bearable Guy uh, drops as of late. So Bearable Guy here from his reverse profile, the 321 Yugal Bereb profile, waving bear, winky emoji, and the carousel, guys, is turned around. So we know the carousel had the five eight, nine in the carousel. We uh, we talked a little bit about the colors and how these different colors represent different currencies, XRP, BTC, and the US dollar. We have the unicorn here. Uh, unicorn with the purple horn. XRP is the unicorn, but now the carousel is reversed. Uh, it was facing the other way. 
This time it is reversed. Is Bearable Guy waving goodbye to the bear market? It sounds like that could be the case. Uh, Matthew L.A.N.Y. here, also just kind of mentioning something that uh, I missed. The rule change, the COMEX 589 rule, changed back on May 19th. And we know the COMEX rule has been uh, part of the Bearable Guy riddle, the whole concept of 589. Uh, and, you know, it doesn't just mean one thing. It's not just price, but it means a lot of things. I did a video recently on that. I will link it up here on, in the top right-hand corner of this video. So there was a change to the COMEX rule. Um, the Three Horsemen of the Apocalypse asks XRP Crypto Wolf. Well, DJ Hudy here, uh, 555, posted this. 5 equals shields, 8 equals center pole, and 9 equals canopy of the carousel. So just going back to Bearable Guy's picture here, you guys can see we have the 5 the eight and the nine, representing those three different parts of the carousel, and the rotation counterclockwise for Europe and the USA, and clockwise for England. So here's a thought, could the direction mean that we're focusing on a different country now? And to what point? Is this a hint as to who might be adopting uh, RippleNet and XRP first? So DJ Hudy 555 here saying, you know, shields and shield brackets, brackets on the perimeter end of each sweep, holds the decorative shield and attaches to one end of a rounding board or cresting. Uh, Denzel Carousel uh, became known for their jester head shield. Uh, other people down here like Enigma Ridworld saying in Geomatra, the rounding boards equals ripple case settled. Eight, the center pole is 113 and that equals ripple in December. So perhaps a verdict on the SEC lawsuit by December. Canopy, uh, sun, corona, sun equals solar flare. Corona is a new block down. So some other interpretations of this, uh, if instead of rounding boards is shields, uh, or for whatever shields is activated or just general meaning of the carousel riddle, shield is moon, third entry, and is ripple in the first entry. So a lot of great interpretations here, guys. Uh, I think we're saying goodbye to the bear market. I think that, uh, you know, we could be in for something really, really big. I mean, Bearable Guy uh, isn't usually this active on Twitter. So interesting to note this. And, you know, could this also mean that we're going to see real world utility very, very soon because of something else that could be happening, Matthew L-I-N-Y? Also bringing this up from an ESMA document, okay? Now, ESMA, European Securities and Markets Authority. Could this have to do with the Bearable Guy carousel riddle? Again, let's not forget. The carousel is now facing in the opposite direction, and so could this mean that maybe we are looking at Europe and the US or England? What was the direction that we were initially supposed to be looking at? Let's look at some of these highlighted documents. Okay, so again, from the European Securities and Markets Authority, we can see that they have been uh, testing DLT or distributed ledger technology. Highlighted here, uh, as you guys can see, in 2022, this has been uh, a large portion of what they are doing. Looks like DLT is getting ready for the European capital markets. Now, are they going to be utilizing RippleNet or perhaps Stellar XLM? As you guys can see here, Matt, uh, he's hashtagged XRP and XLM here. He also retweeted out, or rather, no, he did not retweet this out. This was actually uh, posted by Nathan Price. Also bringing up the ESMA staff meetings with external stakeholders. Who did they meet with? Stellar slash Swift slash Ripple, the payment rails. Are we looking at a bright future ahead? And so Matt also brought these up. So uh, just another tweet here with Matthew L-I-N-Y, how to fix a liquidity crisis. Retweeting out the same Nathan Price tweet, ESMA staff meetings with external stakeholders. Now, for whatever reason, oh, there it goes. For whatever reason, the photos here uh, were not uh, loading properly. And that could have been the reason why also that uh, trading view isn't loading properly. Maybe I'm not getting a... Uh, a good enough connection here. Anyway, it looks like I got them up now. ESMA, European Securities and Markets Authority. Check it out down here, guys. The institution met with Ripple back in February of this year. Markets in crypto assets. Not only that, they met with uh, another company, Trident Flagstone Distributed Ledger Technology, the pilot regime. And that looks like uh, that was last month. And Stellar Lumens as well. All right, look, so it's hanging up again. Uh, can't get that form up. But uh, you guys can see the logo down here. They also met with Stellar Lumens. And with regards to liquidity, I was listening to an analyst and he was uh, suggesting that we are going to see uh, the liquidity crisis start in Europe and make its way outward to North America and perhaps Asia. We see a big recession in the making. Okay, this was a, a statement from May 2022. Top CEOs are fearing the worst in Europe. The Eurozone faces concurrent economic shocks from the war in Ukraine and a surge in food and energy prices exacerbated by the conflict, or so they'd like us to think, along with a supply shock from China's zero beer flu policy. 
This is what they're saying is going to make a big recession. And of course, recessions are a result of a liquidity crisis. Taking money out of the market, nobody spending money. How do we solve for a liquidity crisis? Well, running DLT technology, being able to provide liquidity through something like RippleNet. We're seeing ESMA already uh, preparing for this. And even back in 2020, I think they knew that it was coming. Guys, this is an IMF working paper and this was happening. They wrote this, they published this uh, just as the beer flu was kind of, we were kind of in the midst of the beer flu, corporate liquidity and solvency in Europe during the beer flu, the rules and policies or the rules of policies. And I'm just going to read you the abstract real quick. European firms are facing an unprecedented shock due to the beer flu uh, and policy response has been equally extraordinary. Yet little is known about the effectiveness of policies already implemented in mitigating corporate stress. So they had policy in place, but they didn't know how, you know, the world was going to react to them at this point. This paper addresses the issue by quantifying the impact of country-specific corporate sector relief measures taken in response to the pandemic on corporate liquidity and solvency risk using a simulation approach. Using detailed balance sheets and income statement data over the 4 million European firms, the paper finds that these policies, if implemented as design, have significantly reduced liquidity shortfalls and helped mitigate job and output losses. Uh, our simulation suggests that on aggregate, policies could have saved 15% of employment uh, and up to a quarter of the value added of the corporate sector in Europe. At the same time, the ability of the uh, measures to curb the increase in solvency risks and significantly alleviate pressures on SMEs appears more limited. Without additional equity support some 15 million jobs are at risk so they were projecting outward uh, liquidity could be a problem of course fast forward a couple of years we've now uh you know come out of the pandemic in a lot of ways people are kind of back to normal ish ESMA here, right, the European Securities and Markets Authority, they have already been testing DLT technology. We have Bearable Guy now with the reverse carousel. Goodbye to the bear market. Could we be seeing real world utility being implemented sooner than later? And are we going to see it in Europe, the USA, or England first? There's a lot to digest here, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.